Their newfound freedom means that seven of the starting 11 earn their living in Western Europe. There are eight survivors from the 1990 World Cup squad and six of the team played at Wembley just before going to Italy. And two men who come into all three of those categories are the West Ham goalkeeper, Ludek Miklosko, and number 10, Thomas Scaravi, who helped Genoa beat Liverpool in the UEFA Cup. Well, Scaravi will be initially marked by number two, Martin Keown, in England's three-man centre-back system. Number four, David Rocastle, will operate as an advanced right-back. Number nine, Nigel Clough, will play just behind the two main strikers, who are number eight, Paul Merson, and Mark Haitley, who hasn't started one for five years. But with Gary Lineker on the bench after his throat infection, the most capped player is John Barnes, who makes his 66th appearance for England today, and he's the one from whom perhaps the most is expected. So Czechoslovakia wearing red shirts and white shorts start the match playing from left to right. England in all blue. Number two here is Happel for the Czechs. He'll play wide on the right, tackled by Stuart Pearce. And uh, Barnes, number 11, with license to play from a midfield position and go forward into whatever spaces he can find. Number seven is David Platt. And Merson gets an early touch. And here's Trevor Brooking. Well, there's an opportunity, isn't there, for two or three new faces, particularly the striking pair. I think Mark Haitley and Paul Merson are, are two players who feel there is a striking place, I think, before the summer comes and it's up to whoever perhaps takes the opportunity this evening that might put the place to Sweden so I think it's uh, that partnership I'm looking at more than most number four here for the Czechs is Kula chance for David Seaman in goal for England to uh, Increase the competition on Chris Woods, who's been sub for both B team and A team over the last two days. This is Barnes. Oh, two good touches already, but he's given the ball away. Kubik for Czechoslovakia. Skuravi to his right. Des Walker goes for the tackle, but Kubik gets the shot in. As we saw in the World Cup. He's a dangerous customer when the ball's on his left foot. Number nine, Lubos Kubik. One of the players, Knopflicek is the other one. That's not him, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Kubik and Knopflicek were the two players who Derby County showed an interest in when uh, the late Robert Maxwell tried to lure them to the west. And uh, Kubik does pack a punch in that left foot. Okay. Person pulling out right, no surprise in that because he is uh, comfortable in wide positions. Number seven is Bielek for the Czechs, and now number three, Kadlec's joins the attack. Skuravi, oh, Kubik in low to space, and good goalkeeping by David Seaman. But what about the gap there? Well, of course, it is a problem, Skuravi's height, and uh, there, Martin Keown didn't have any chance. And Fortunately, it just flicked off his header rather than go square because if it was square, Kubik had acres of space and uh, on his left foot, I wouldn't have fancied being David Seaman. And the check. And again a foul. And Keown is having quite a tormenting opening period here. He's uh, mistiming his tackles. <laughs> and uh, the Czechs have possession again with Happel. Already Stuart Pearce setting the captain's example with some fine interceptions and some strong tackling. On the other flank, it's Rowcastle. But that's straight to the uh, Czech right-sided player, Hapo. 
And here's Kubik. Good running uh, by Konoflicek. Des Walker is his marker, but he shoved him. It's a free kick to Czechoslovakia. Definitely a little nudge there in the back. And, and the wire position is a dangerous position to give away a free kick because that's when uh, they might be able to hit Skirabi. Yes, and they've also brought Kadlex, uh, the blonde lad up from the back. Skirabi's there! Oh, what a good goal! He's turned a somersault and he's turned the England defence too. That was whipped in. And England have gone a goal down after 20 minutes and you'll see Skaravi come in here and it goes in off the post well there's a great header but it's, it's much easier you know to whip in crosses like this from those wide positions that's why it was a dangerous position and, and with his height and strength even though he's got two defenders the faintest of touches and I don't think David Seaman saw it until it was beyond him well, what a start for the Czechs, and it only reflects the opening 20 minutes in that Skarabi was proving a menace to Martin Keown in particular, and when Des Walker fouled his opponent, Konofli Czech, as Trevor Brookings said, the Czechs were always going to look for one man, and they've gone in front. Cheers of the crowd greeting the announcement of the goal scorer. It's his 12th goal for Czechoslovakia, Skarabi, in 34 internationals. And now England have a free kick in a not dissimilar position. Stuart Pearce was the player brought down. That means that Keown will now come forward and position himself behind Haitley on the far side of the area. In fact, Platt is calling him in closer. Nigel Clough to take this. But nothing like as good as the one we saw at the other end, was it? Here's Mabbott. An up and under for David Platt and Mark Haitley. And Miklosko makes the catch, but was fouled. Yes, that one, as you say, an up and under, good description. And uh, Ludek Miklosko impressed everyone the last few years at uh, West Ham. And he's such a dominating goalkeeper, something like that. Once he gets in position, that was always going to be his fault. And it'd be an interesting test now. I mean, Graham Taylor wouldn't be happy to go one down, but it's the sort of game then where he might learn a few things about the side. I'll tell you what, they've got some good players, the Czechs. That's Nemechek. And here he is again, the sixth, the captain. Good football from midfield. Experienced player. It's 28th cap, Nemechek. And he showed there how you can get forward and initiate an attack and also be on the end of it. They're playing right at the top of their game at the moment, the Czechs, and England aren't quite sure how to cope with it. Pierce. Because at the moment they haven't got a sort of holding man in midfield, such as a, a, a Paul Stewart who's on the bench, and of course David Badu who played in the B International yesterday, and, and that's the sort of person who could be picking up these midfield players running from deep. Whereas at the moment, you're having to rely on one of the three central defenders being alert to pick up the person coming from that position. Well, I think the way the two teams were selected, we were looking for an attacking game, and it looks that way early on because uh, both goals have been threatened. England's more so. They're one down, and they have a chance perhaps to put something right from a free kick of their own. referee will get rather irritated if they take so long over the free kick there seems no reason to me why it can't be taken the checks are 10 yards away Pierce and it was harmless in the end unfortunately for England both free kicks in that sort of situation have been on the wrong side of the 18-yard box for a left-footed player as you can see here it was it was hardly a touch and he just slipped on his standing foot and it bobbled past the post. Uh, Nigel Clough might have been better that side. There would appear to be a slight disturbance behind the left-hand goal. I can tell you no more than that at the moment, but uh, 
certain people are, seem to be going up to the back of the uh, stand there. We'll keep an eye on it as the play goes on with Cadlets. There are about 400 England followers here, as I said. Knopfli check. Keown gets the ball away, beautifully controlled by Barnes. And then Clough, a good pass out to Haitley here, up against Cadlets. Clough is now coming up behind him. Still Haitley, but he couldn't quite turn the defender. And in the end, he settled for a corner. You can see from those pictures that there is something going on at the back of that stand. But back on the pitch, John Barnes is going to take a corner for England. Keown facing him. No, I don't think so. And there's Haitley, Merson. Merson's header, in fact, went away from goal. This is Rowcastle. Well, was unlucky, it was a, a good header, and I'm not sure if the ball wouldn't have been heading perhaps just past the post and the, there was a man on the line anyway, but uh, Paul Merson trying to deflect it and got too firm a touch. This is Knoflicek who drew a defender across to earn that free kick, which brought the goal. This time it's Mabbott marking him. And did rather better. Glonek shakes off Haitley. Hapal. Oh, what a lovely turn by Scaravi. He's having a fabulous opening half hour here. The Italian-based centre forward. Full of good touches and aerial threat too. This is where Haitley uh, was bypassed, and just look at this turn. They weren't tight enough on him, really. And he, actually, the man who was on him was Paul Merson, who drifted back, and, and, and that was the problem. And it was a fine turn, but you, you know Scarabi wants it on his left foot, and fortunately, he didn't catch it there. Yes, there's a forward in the defender's position there for England. You're absolutely right. And uh, the Czechs have looked the more confident side in this opening period having said that um, there's as an established lineup England is still doing a lot of fine-tuning and uh, players coming back into the scene being tried out and others absent that should be said too here's Pierce he's nearly always present Haitley to slide it into Haitley. Good play. David Platt pulled it back behind Haitley, but here's Merson! And there's the equaliser for England. And Paul Merson of Arsenal pops up in the right place. The ball came off a Czech player, but uh, he kept the shot down. Miklosko, I think, got his hands to it, but it crept over the line. And after 27 minutes here in Prague, it's Czechoslovakia 1, England 1. Miklosko may not be too happy about that, but uh, Merson will be delighted. Bilek. Well, both teams playing through midfield at the moment, and it's good to see... Lovely footwork from Kubik, and a nice ball too. This is Nemechek who made the run. And they've got a player in space on the far side. Knoflicek. And this is Happel. They break well, don't they? Uh, certainly the number nine, Kubik, in midfield. Got a delightful left footer. And there, Knoflicek, who, alongside Skorabi, was setting up Happel to try and take out the camera, but uh, those two up front, Konoflicek there sliding in to set up the shot, and Skaravi with the taller man uh, are a good pairing. This is Rowcastle, and now it's Clough, two strikers ahead of him, thought about going alone, so it's now Rowcastle again, and Platt just slotting in to Rowcastle's position. Merson, but that was short of David Platt, 
And it's Kubik. Hovinets. Kubik. Oh, what great play. And a super little ball for Kula. And Seaman scrambles it round the post from number four, Karel Kula. But what a terrific piece of approach play by Kubik here, who has been the pick of the first half for me. Kula didn't get any real power on that, but uh, Seaman just sort of scooped it out. It was a lovely ball. The Czechs have the corner, and Skuravi threatening to make a run to the near post again here. It's gone much deeper, but... <laughs> was uh, not quite what uh, Kubik had in mind on that occasion. But uh, he has been uh, number nine there, uh, Lubos Kubik, someone to admire, Trevor. Well, he's got good balance, lovely vision. Uh, his weight of pass is excellent as well. I mean, it was a perfect through ball. Uh, you know, personally, I think Kula should have done uh, better with the shot. He scuffed it a bit, which... Uh, you know, just bobbled it more towards David Seaman, probably upset David Seaman as well. He couldn't quite time the save, but it uh, it was a lovely through ball. Well, it could so easily have been 2-1 to the Czechs there. This is a, a good, gifted, technical side they've got, Czechoslovakia. They're playing some sweet football on the ground. Bilek here. Six is Nemechek. And Skuravi again, turned in by Happel. And England... Fully stretched. Barnes back to help. And Pierce, the captain, about to lead the team off at half time. It's 1 1. England have come back well. But make no mistake about it, they're playing a good side here. Skuravi, the scorer for Czechoslovakia. Paul Merson, the equaliser for England. England start the second half with two changes. Lee Dixon is on at right back in place of David Rocastle. And Paul Stewart has come into the midfield wearing number 16 in place of Nigel Clough. Any comments on that, Trevor Brooking? Well, I think uh, possibly the first one, Lee Dixon coming on, David Rocastle wasn't finding it easy to, to adapt to that new role. And Paul Stewart, I think, in midfield, coming into that position we were talking about, uh, perhaps just sitting in front of the, the sort of central defensive trio to make sure anyone who's running from deep will be picked up and of course it's a, a chance as well for him to show his form that uh, he's been showing for Spurs for most of the season yes Dixon's wearing number 14 Stewart 16 it's his second uh, appearance for the full England side Paul Stewart he had 23 minutes as a sub against Germany at the start of the season you may remember but rather longer today Here's Nemechek, whose team are unchanged at this stage, although I know the Czech coach is intending to make some uh, alterations later. And a signal there to the England bench. I think there might be an injury to uh, John Barnes. He pulled up there and waved across to the uh, England staff. Uh, if it is uh, what it looks like, a hamstring he was pointed to, there's no point in him carrying on. And uh, what an injury-ridden season he's had. It'll be a great show. And here's a break for Czechoslovakia. It's Konofli Czech with Happel outside him. And Happel goes now for the shot. Oh, dear! It's escaped the grasp of David Seaman. And Martin Keown scrambled it away from the post. And that threatened to be a nightmare moment for the England goalkeeper. Well, it was a bad mistake because he was very wide here. It was only a half shot come cross and uh, one of those that normally he would take comfortably. It bobbles away and for what must have been an agonising couple of seconds, weren't sure what was going to happen when it just came back off the post and Keown hooked it away. Yes, this is Happel's shot and Seaman here is really having difficulty. I mean, it was a... Agonising is the word, isn't it? Before it was finally scrambled away. Meanwhile, Barnes is still hobbling on for the moment. 
This is Kular. Skirabi in a dangerous position in the centre. And a good challenge by Walker, but England here are going through a torrid time. The Czechs have got them on the rack. And it's another corner. Now, will the referee allow the substitution to be made first? John Barnes coming off. And what a pity that is to see him injured again after just six minutes of the second half. And his replacement is Tony Dorigo of Leeds United. That was good play by Stewart. He's put Merson in possession. And England badly need a little spell now in the Czech half to shake the cobwebs off. Here's Merson. Well, I know that there is competition between the goalkeepers, but uh, that particular moment in the game won't have done David Seaman's case any good at all in his bid to claim the position from Chris Woods. It really was, to say the least, an over-anxious piece of goalkeeping and a mistake that could so easily have made it 2-1 to the Czechs. Knopfli check. Platt. Because, uh, of course, John Barnes' injury, apart from you know, being terrible bad luck for him after an Achilles calf and narrow hamstring, which could keep him out of Liverpool's semi-final, uh, does give England a little bit of a lopsided look because they've taken Clough and Rokas, who, who could both have played midfield, and, of course, now had to bring on Tony Dorigo, who's filling up a, a midfield role. I want to make the point here, uh, again, that the two managers have agreed that they can have anything up to five substitutions today, so... Graham Taylor will be quite pleased now that uh, he agreed to that. Having used two at half-time, he's now got a third on. This is uh, a good spell for the Czechs, though. It really is. And here's Skarabi. But he couldn't find a colleague. It was, again, brilliantly set up by Kubik, the number nine. Merson. Dixon. I'll tell you what, Trevor, a lot's been said about French football and whether Waddle and Trevor Stevens should be in the England party. Kubik, the number nine, plays for Metz in France, and they say he was too lazy when he played in Italy, but he hasn't been lazy today, has he? No, he's had, a in the first 45 minutes, uh, probably too much space, uh, but then there was no sort of particular ball marker. In this second 45 minutes, Paul Stewart is, is doing a specific job on him and, and has denied him that little bit of space, but they've got so much good movement off the ball and their confidence naturally growing at the moment. And he's over there again now, is Kubik. Dorigo, left-footed, obviously not playing at left-back because they've already got Pierce there, but he will be able to support Pierce on that left-hand side, which is what they're doing at the moment. Here's Merson and Pierce given the freedom to go by Dorigo's presence. And David Platt, a great run into the area here. Pierce couldn't find him. The longer cross looks for Haitley. And he's leaning over his opponent. Yeah, the new formation should give David Platt a, a little bit more um, leeway to get forward because when you had John Barnes and Nigel Clough uh, ahead of him, I think he felt uh, he should hold that much more as well as being man-marked by Kula. But, but now with, with Tony Dorigo and Paul Stewart behind him, he, he should have the confidence to make those late runs where he can get perhaps goal-scoring opportunity. Well, I have to report it's a most enjoyable match to watch. There's nothing defensive or cagey about this international, I can tell you. And the Czechs threatening to come on even stronger now. Seven, Michael Bielek. Nemechek. Tucked back into Bielek. Offside. Offside against Kula. I don't know whether that sawdust in the goal mouth has uh, affected David Seaman at all. It's a sanded area inside the six-yard box. But uh, certainly he'll want to forget that... Uh, moment when the ball went through his hands oh, 
Here's Paul Stewart. Oops, that was a, a reckless tackle by Pavel Happel. And the Austrian referee gives it the call it as uh, the Czechs warm up one or two replacements. That's Freideck on the left and Nemec on the right. That's Haitley, but he can't direct the header to a blue shirt. Forward by Stewart, and he can't direct the pass to one either. to his right, took a couple of England players away and Kubik turning and slotting it through to Kula. This is Happel, number two. And it took two England players, Pierce and Walker, to force that ball out for a corner. tall figure of Skirabi threats. Nemechek's there, that's in! I don't know whether Nemechek even got a touch, I think it went straight in from the corner. Well, Joseph Povenets took the corner with his left foot and he cut it into the near post area. Nemechek didn't get a touch, maybe an England player threw the goalkeeper, but Povenets has to get the credit for putting Czechoslovakia 2-1 up. So England now coming from behind for the second time in the match. And uh, with a much reshuffled team, it should be said. Nothing like the uh, formation that started now, really. Well, the formation might be the personnel, isn't it? Interesting, Tony Dorigo coming on. I just wonder if Gary Lineker, who of course is on the bench, uh, is still uh, feeling the effects of tonsillitis because um, he might have been perhaps the, the better place player now to come on, especially if they find themselves a goal behind. Well, here's Merson who put things right the first time. 14 is Lee Dixon. Eight is on the end of this, but couldn't direct it back inside to Platt. is worth uh, thinking about isn't it I mean uh, you'd think with England 2-1 down you'd need your top goal scorer on but uh, having said that Merson's done absolutely nothing wrong and it may be that Graham Taylor wants to have a longer look at Haitley the only thing you could Paul Merson is an adaptable one and he, he could play up with uh, Lineker up with Haitley and Merson sort of float around behind that and, and add the third man up front Yes, that's right. Well, we'll see if he does. For the moment, England have a chance anyway. Oh, and it's the equaliser! Martin Keown! Well, number two, Martin Keown comes here and produces a goal out of nothing. It's a super shot, this, for his first international goal by the Everton defender. And... For once, the Czechs are rocked back on their heels. Miklosko puts an arm up and can't possibly do anything about it. And Keown has equalised for England after 65 minutes. It's 2-2. And we are going to see Gary Lineker. Haidl is there. Dorigo's there. Oh, and well held on by the keeper. They weren't very pleased with the follow-up challenge. Paul Stewart Gary, in the thick of it there. Gary, Gary, Tony Dorigo 
latching on to a knockback from Mark Haitley. Ludot McCloscoe did magnificently well to hold on to that. And here's the substitution that brings England's second highest scorer ever onto the pitch. It's Gary Lineker hey. for Gary Mabbott. A Tottenham switch, if you like. Lineker with two goals to get to equal Bobby Charlton's record of 49. Comes on with about 18 minutes of this match left. Skurave causing havoc again and Seaman puts the ball out and it's back in the goalkeeper's arms from Happel who probably should have done better in that position well <laughs> the game moves so fast there's hardly time to dwell on that the Czechs are in possession again with Kadlec and here's Skurave stretching Walker did he foul him? the whistle's gone and Skurave is unsettling England again well, now there's no cover, of course, with the sweeper, so Martin Keown and Des Walker are at times one against one. The first one, he just got the wrong side of Keown. On that occasion, he definitely gave a, a nudge to Des Walker. This is the one where he got the wrong side, and as you can see, tried to loop it over Happel, but luckily, um, relief with David Seaman straight into his chest. It looks at this stage as though England are going to come out of this very testing arena with a draw. Which is exactly how it ends. A fine match for the spectator. Czechoslovakia proving to be one of the stronger European nations with some excellent technical players. And England twice dug themselves out of difficulties here in Prague. You said you're going to experiment. What did you learn from tonight's experiment? Well, I mean, I think that more than anything else, I mean, Paul Merson has played his first full international. Um, Mark Haitley has been brought back after four years. Martin Keown's only playing his second one, and we've played a very good side. I, I mean, I said at the time that when I saw them play against France, when they were five players short themselves, if they'd had those five players, which they had tonight, then I think perhaps the result against France might have been a different one, and who knows, Czechoslovakia may have been in the European Nations Cup as they were in the World Cup, and I think they're a good side. So today we were chasing a little bit. I felt that we were outbossed in midfield, and that created a lot of problems for us. But that's what experiment's about. I mean, this I've said this all of the time, there's no point in not making experiments and then assuming that when you do make them, you're going to control every game. That's not going to be the case, and you do take these risks. We've had the draw today, and that's fair enough, but it's part and parcel of looking at things in readiness for the summer. Were you conscious this was a big opportunity, a big chance for you? Yeah, it was a big chance. Like The boss, the bosses give everybody a chance, and he's given me a chance tonight, and hopefully I've took it. There is a place going that could be for Sweden. You're trying to book it this evening and trying to make sure you can get yourself in his thinking firmly. Yeah, everybody is, you know. Uh, but, you know, I had to try and do my best tonight and the goals helped and uh, hopefully I'll be in the next squad and you never know, I might sneak in. I don't know. The game kept slipping away from us and um, they got their noses in front. But, um, you know, it was nice to get back on level terms. But, you know, it was a, a seesaw type game and uh, a few things to work on. They were a handful, the Czech forwards at times, weren't they? They were, yes. Uh, you know, they seemed to have acres of space to play in. And the lad up front's a strong lad and um, was able to use his body well. But, um, you know, he scored one and, and I scored one. So, um, you know, I feel as if, he, you know, he hasn't come out on top. You watched the cricket this morning. So, uh, given what was the day like for England overall, do you think? All right, we've been in a World Cup final at cricket. All right, uh, we lost it. I think we lost it to the better side. I think Pakistan played extremely well. And at this supposed level, you're not supposed to say